The story you are about to hear is true. Only the names have been changed to protect the innocent. Fatima Cigarettes, best of all long cigarettes, brings you Dragnet. You're a detective sergeant. You're assigned to homicide detail. For two months, a depraved criminal has been at work in your city. Men and women have been robbed, brutally attacked. Your job, get them. If you want a long cigarette, smoke the best of all long cigarettes. Smoke extra mild Fatima. Yes, Fatima is the king-size cigarette which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, superbly blended to make it extra mild, to give Fatima a much different, much better flavor and aroma than any other long cigarette. That's why Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. Enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. Best of all, long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Dragnet, the documented drama of an actual crime. For the next 30 minutes, in cooperation with the Los Angeles Police Department, you will travel step by step on the side of the law through an actual case from official police files. From beginning to end, from crime to punishment, Dragnet is the story of your police force in action. It was Wednesday, March 7th. It was cloudy in Los Angeles. We were working the night watch out of homicide. My partner's Ben Romero. The boss is Thad Brown, chief of detectives. My name's Friday. I was on the way home from the office, and it was 2.25 a.m. when I got to Collis Avenue. Number 4656. Yeah, Ma. Can I wake you? Well, what time is it? A little after two. Oh, you can't keep this up. You've got to have your bed. Don't worry, I'm okay. You got any cold meat in the icebox? There's some pressed ham, a few slices of bologna. Didn't you have any dinner? A couple of hamburgers and a piece of pie. I got hungry again. Well, I had some nice beef stew for dinner. There's some left in the icebox, so I'll come down and warm it for you. No, no, all I want is a sandwich, Ma. You go on back to sleep. Working all hours first thing you know, you'll be getting sick. You need your food and you need your rest. Nobody cares when you're sick. You didn't have to get up, Ma. All I want is a sandwich. I can fix it. You better have a bowl full of stew. Here, it'll take a minute to warm it up. Nice new potatoes in it. Some of those onions you like, too. White Bermudas. Okay, not too much now. I'll get the milk. It's half past two in the morning. What kept you so late again? Another stakeout. Same job. Another murder in Highland Park? No, Ma, the badge bandit. The one that poses as a policeman. Oh, that one. Mm-hmm. You certainly ought to do something about him. Yeah, well, I'm trying to. I can't find him. Now, there was a piece in the paper about it tonight. They say it's just terrible the way he beats up people and robs them. Yeah. Badge bandit. The way he treats women. Mm-hmm. Ought to be a shame. They ought to put him away. Yeah. You got some more rye bread? Mm-hmm. Are you going to have tomorrow off, Joseph? Thanks. No. The captain says we work straight through till we get the guy. Oh. I thought you were going to have tomorrow off. Mm-hmm. Oh, you ought to tell the captain. You need your rest. You can't go on like this working all hours. You'll be coming down sick one of these days. Mm-hmm. Fifteen <laughs> robberies. Fifteen assaults. All in two months. Somebody's got to stop him. You ready? Oh, yeah, I think so. Right. Well, can't they warn the people? They wouldn't be getting robbed and beaten up if they weren't parked in those lonely places. Spooning so silly. Yeah. I'm afraid we can't do anything about that, Ma. It's a perfect place. we got a right to park there, what? Yeah, I suppose. Well, let me have your plate. Right here. No, hold it, hold it. That's fine. Right. Another spoonful. You can't work if you don't eat. 
Is this good stuff? Yeah, sure it is. But you're down at shop rides nice. His stewing beef's just wonderful. Mm-hmm, yeah. Ben work late with you? Yeah, his wife's sore, too. He hasn't been home much since we started on this. It's a tough one. Oh, my. The times certainly have changed since I was a girl. All this robbing, beating up. Crazy people. No. Any mail today? No, there's a couple of bills. Will you set the alarm? I got to check back in at 8 in the morning. 8 o'clock? Why so early? Badge man has got two more victims tonight. They're college kids. Oh. Doctor says he didn't think we should talk to him tonight, so we'll have to see him tomorrow morning oh. at the hospital. Were they badly injured? Well, pretty bad. A boy took a terrible beating. The girl was attacked, same as the others. Oh, my. Well, it's very good, Ma. I better get to bed. Yes, well, your face looks so thin. You need all the rest you can get. I'll get it. Now, who can that be? It's almost three in the morning. Hello? This is Lorman down Homicide, Joe. Sorry to bother you. Yeah, Lorman. What is it? Captain wants you and Romero to meet him in Hollywood and Laurel right away. What's the matter now? Attack and hold up in Laurel Canyon 20 minutes ago. Yeah? Got the area blocked off. Figure they got the man trapped. The victims get out. Look at the guy. Same description, the badge bandit. <laughs> I left the house, went over and picked up Ben. We drove out to the edge of the Santa Monica Mountains where Hollywood Boulevard ends and Laurel Canyon begins. We headed back into the canyon to the blockaded area. Captain Steed from Homicide was there waiting for us. Hi, Skip. Hi, just a minute. Taylor, call communications again. Have him tell the men out on Ventura to start moving in. Right, Captain. Sorry to call you back. Couldn't be helped. Okay. How's it shaping up? Three, Look, wait a minute. search detail in vicinity of Laurel Canyon. Unit 62K reports that they are at Mulholland Drive and Oakstone Avenue. Nothing further to report. Okay, no what did you say, Joe? Well, so how's it shaping up? Well, here's a sketch of the area. It covers just about all the Laurel Canyon district. Well, yeah. Badge Bandit got his victims near the top of this hill here. Mm-hmm. Old man in the neighborhood heard a woman scream and phoned in. How sure are we the guy didn't get away? Well, the man who called in said the bandit had trouble starting his car. Finally, he left it and took off into the brush. He was headed west down this road here. Yeah, mm-hmm. I just had a call from the communications. The crew from Leighton Prince are on the way. All right, any report from the detail up on Canyon Road? Nothing yet. I'll stand by the radio. Okay. How much area we got to cover? Well, from the mouth of the canyon here, all the way back to Ventura Boulevard. On the west here, from Lookout Mountain Avenue over to Crestview Drive on the east. How much have we got to go on? Crowley talked to the victim's... For a minute before they took him to Georgia Street. Yeah. The guy's description's the same. Heavy set, blonde hair, chubby face, horn rimmed glasses. Mm-hmm. Well, if he's on foot, there's plenty of underbrush around here to hide him. Just a minute, I want to get this call in first. Taylor, I have communications contact 72K. Tell them to hold their line stationary. Yeah. We'll have the others close in from the west and the north. Right. You two better get up on Groveland Drive. The line's pretty thin up there. Olsen will use the help. Is that the area where you've been in the car? Yeah. I want you to cover all the houses in that area. Check with everybody you can find in the neighborhood. They may be able to help. If they don't answer, find out why. Okay. I'll be making the rounds in another ten minutes. Check with you then. All right, let's go, Oh, one more thing. Yes, sir? I'll tell you what I told the rest of the men. This guy's in a corner and he's got a gun. There's only one way out for him. Yeah. Make sure it's not you. 3.45 a.m. Ben and I drove up to Groveland Drive and joined the search. We started our house-to-house canvas of the neighborhood where the suspect had abandoned his car. None of the residents had any further information to give us. 4 a.m., we kept on checking. 23 hours. Long shift. Yeah. I could use some sleep. Wife of mine is boiling mad. She's even mad at the kid. Yeah? What's the trouble? Oh, aunt of her sent down some flower bulbs from Oregon yesterday. Gladiola bulb. Yeah. Kid was playing with a little girl next door yesterday, and they found a box of flower bulbs. They put the mess of them in a pot of water and boiled them on the stove. What they do that for? Who oh, no. There's another house up ahead. We better check it. Yeah. We ought to get some street lights up here. Yeah. That's nice work waking people up in the middle of the night. Oh, I don't like it any more than they do. Wish we could make them believe that. Hmm. Nice neighborhood up here. Wonder what the price is on these lots. Well, it shouldn't be too high. They say real estate's coming down. Mm. Yeah, what is it? Police officers. Sorry to disturb you. We'd like to talk to you a minute. Oh, all right. Let me get the door open. 
What's been going on in the neighborhood tonight? Some kind of trouble? Cars racing up and down the hill? What's the trouble? Have you noticed any strangers in the neighborhood last hour? No, I just got to bed 20 minutes ago. I work out at Paramount. We're shooting nights. What's all the commotion, anyway? We're looking for a suspect. He's supposed to be around this area. Well, I haven't seen anybody. I thought I heard somebody out by the garage a few minutes ago. Went out and looked around, but I didn't see anything. Did you check to see if your car is still in the garage? No, I left it in the driveway. No, sir, there's no car in your driveway. Sure there is. Let me show you. Hey, it's gone. Can we use your phone? Yeah. Yeah, but I saw it just a few minutes ago. The, the, the car was right there in the driveway. You think that guy took my car? Yes, sir, it's a pretty good bet. You got your license number handy there. No, I don't remember it. I got it on a card in my wallet. Give me communication. Can you give us a description of your car? It's a Plymouth sedan, it's black. Two door sedan with search detail, Laurel Canyon. I got some new information for all units in the detail. Here's the license number. Oh, thanks. Uh, will you broadcast this information to all units in the search detail? What was the make and model of your car? 46 Black Plymouth, a two door sedan. Uh, 1946 Black Plymouth, two door sedan, license number. Let me see. Oh, 7 X ray 2569. This car's just been stolen from 10211 Groveland Drive. Any identifying marks on the car? Well, I left my keys in it. No, no, sir. I mean, any special markings on the car? Maybe a dent in one of the fenders? Well, the... Here, George, hold on. We're getting it. Uh, the right headlight went out on me last night. I haven't had it fixed yet. The right headlight on the car is out. Notify all units in the search detail that we believe suspect is now in possession of this car. Right, thank you. Let's go. It must have happened in the last 15 minutes. I heard that noise and I went out to check the car was there then. Well, here's our card. We'll be checking with you later. Yeah, I sure hope you find it. I don't know how I can get to work tomorrow without my car. Yeah, we'll notify you. Yeah, gee, I sure hope you find it. Thanks for your help. Come on, man. Eleven Groveland Drive. The right headlight is out. Oh, we got it. Yeah. I don't think he could have gotten that car through the blockade yet, you. Mm-hmm. Better start searching the side roads, huh? Yeah. There's one. Leading off to the left, up ahead. Okay, let's try it. Wait a minute, there's a car coming down the hill toward us. You're always making time. Yo. Only one headlight on the car. It's coming right at us. Turn around, quick. There's no room. Get over to the inside. I can't. It's too late. Then turn. Hang on. We're going over. Attention, all units. Special attention, oh. all units in search oh. detail. Kennedy of Laurel Canyon. ADK reports theft of a 1946... You all right? Ben. was called, and Ben and I were taken to Georgia Street Receiving Hospital. There I received emergency treatment for multiple cuts and bruises and a sprained left shoulder. Ben didn't do so well. He had a possible concussion, two broken ribs, and a half a dozen severe cuts about the face and arms. We were then taken to the P&F ward. The next afternoon, we had a visit from Captain Steed and Chief of Detective Thad Brown. Friday, how you feeling? Oh, pretty good, Chief. You saw Romero across the hall. You came out better than he did. Yeah. That's what I hear. You resting any? Oh, much better. No danger involved. Needs rest, that's about all. How long? Oh, well, you'll be here two weeks, according to the doctor. What about you? A couple of days. Too bad, Joe. Badge bandit? Yeah. We feel like you two got banged up for nothing. Oh? Huh? After he rammed your car, he ditched the black Plymouth, and then we figure he hit with the underbrush. Yeah? Somehow, while we were hauling you and Ben out of that wreck, he slipped through the line. Any fingerprints on the car? No, none we could use. It's rotten luck. I guess it was his night, huh? We're getting more men from Metro Division to help out. Mm -hmm. And we're doubling the number of decoys around the city. Police women, huh? And we'll have each of them planted in a parked car along with an officer in every area of the badge bend that's been working. All he has to do is grab at the bait once. Yeah, if he goes for it. He'll have plenty of time to choose. We work the same setup every night till we reach him. It's a big operation. Might have to run it for weeks unless he quits. There's only one way a guy like that ever quits. Yeah. When we stop him. Saturday, March 10th at 2 p.m. I was released from the PNF ward and went home. Ben stayed on at the hospital. He had at least another 10 days to go before release. Sunday, I spent at home. Monday afternoon, I checked back in at the office, and Captain Steed put me on decoy duty for that week, along with policewoman Dorothy River. We were assigned to cover an isolated parking area near Mulholland Drive and Beverly Glen. It was a nice view, but the duty was slow. No sign on the badge, Ben. 
Policewoman River and I waited it out from late evening to early morning, from Monday through Thursday. Friday night came. Same thing. We waited. How's Ben? You see him today? Yeah, he's doing fine. Be out next week. Grouchy, I guess. Oh, sure. You want a cigarette? Thank you. You can sure tell it's Friday night. Yeah. Mm, thanks. College kids are out in force. Mm-hmm. What time you got? Mm. A quarter to two. Long nights. Yeah, slow. You cold? No, are you? Mm, just a little. It's chilly up here in the early morning. What's that? A car full of kids just pulling out. Are the cars gone too? Yep. Yeah. We're the only ones left. Uh, your stakeout's got on your nerves. So look, if you're cold, you can have my coat. It doesn't bother me. No, no, it's all right, Joe. Thanks. It's a beautiful view from up here, isn't it? All the lights. Yeah. You like to dance, Joe. What? I said you like to dance. Oh, once in a while, I guess. I'm not too good. Why? Well, our club's having its big annual dance two weeks from Saturday. Yeah. Might get a kick out of it. It's formal. Well, it leaves me out. I don't own a tux. Well, you could rent one. It'd be fun. No, I'm afraid I don't look good in a tux. I never met a man who thought he did. Why don't you try it? I might be working. Well, I mean, if you're not working, why don't you come? You going? Well, I was planning on it. Got a date? <laughs> no, not yet. I have hopes. There's a car pulling in. Let's see. Yeah, parked over in back of us. I can only make out one person in the car. Yeah. Looks like a man. I can't be sure. All right. Come on. We're closer. We might as well look the part, huh? All right. He's getting out of the car. Is he coming this way? Walking over to the side of the road. He's got a flashlight. Looking around. Mm. He's built like the badge bandit. Short, heavy set. Yeah, he's turning around. He's got his flashlight on us. He's coming up on your side of the car. I take it easy. You know what to do. Come on, out of that car. Police officer. All right, hold on. Got a gun, Joe. Yeah. Come on, I said out of the car, both of you. All right. All right, drop the gun. Drop it. That's him. Yeah. Now I'll get the cuffs on him. Thanks. I didn't think I hit him that hard. You didn't, I didn't. Policewoman Dorothy River and I took the suspect to Hollywood Division where he was booked on suspicion of robbery. He gave his name as Charles Leon Kirby, age 46. Monday, March 19th, Ben was released from the hospital and checked back in for work. A special show-up was held at which 10 of the 17 victims definitely identified Kirby as the badge bandit. The suspect had finally been apprehended. Now we started the slow process of formally charging the man and presenting our evidence against him to bring him to trial. 10 a.m., Ben and I went across the street to the sixth floor of the Hall of Justice to present our case against Kirby and to obtain a formal complaint against him. We met with Deputy District Attorney Broker. When did you get out of the hospital, Ben? This morning. Sure got sick of that place. Heard about your accident. That guy sure gave you enough trouble, didn't he? Yeah, he's still giving us trouble. How's that? He got in a tangle with another prisoner out in the Hollywood Division. Yeah? The other prisoner gave Kirby a pretty bad going over. Cut him up and broke his left forearm. They're moving him in an ambulance from Hollywood to the prison ward at the general hospital. When did this happen? Just this, this morning. I think they're moving him downtown now. Tough one. Now, how about your reports on Kirby? Are they all in order? Well, here's a summary report. It alleges ten positive identifications containing ten counts for robbery and ten counts of forcible rape. All right. And here are seven other crime reports. Only partial identification on these. Okay. What have you got for corroborating evidence against him? Oh, he went through Kirby's apartment, found at least a dozen pieces of property that he took from his victims, mm -hmm. mostly watches and jewelry. The victims identified every piece we found. Okay, let me get the details on it. No. Excuse me a minute. Sure. Broker speaking. Yeah, it's not. You, Friday. Thank you. Friday. When? Yeah, right away. Well, that does it. What's the matter? Kirby. He just broke out of that ambulance. You are listening to Dragnet, the case history of a police investigation presented in the public interest by Fatima Cigarettes.
If you smoke a long cigarette, it will be in your interest to listen to a typical case history of a Fatima smoker. It's the case of Mr. Richard Watts, Jr., drama critic of one of New York's great newspapers. This is his actual signed statement. My working day starts when most people are going to bed. When the curtain closes on the last act, I've got a newspaper deadline to make. Working more means smoking more. And that's when Fatima quality really tells. I agree. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. And so do more and more smokers every day. Actual figures show extra mild Fatima has more than doubled its smokers coast to coast. So enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself. The king-size cigarette, which contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, superbly blended to make it extra mild. You will prefer Fatima's much different, much better flavor. You will agree. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. The best of all long cigarettes. As soon as word of Kirby's escape came through, the information was broadcast to all points. All available cruiser cars and men were rushed to the escape area, and a door-to-door canvas got underway. All of the men were given mug shots of Kirby together with his description. 11 a.m., Ben and I got back to the office. Found a message from Captain Steed to meet him in the chief of detective's office. No man in that area until further notice. Check the bus depots in the Union Station. Right. What's the story, Chief? That's what I'm trying to find out. Where do you make the break? Near 4th and Main. Couldn't have picked a better spot. The ambulance had just crossed 3rd and Main when Kirby slugged the guard. The driver was too busy dodging traffic to notice what was going on in back. That's a lousy break. Kirby jumped out of the back end of the ambulance and disappeared in the crowd. No sign of him since. Well, that's fine. Takes us almost three months to reach the guy, and he breaks away on a cheap fluke like that. Well, he doesn't have many friends in town. He's only got one we know of. Mm, yeah. A brother. Kirby stays with him pretty often from what we could gather, and the brother lives in a rooming house down on Alameda. Anybody checked that yet? We've got it staked out. The brother works at a box factory in the south end of town. That's covered, too. And he's not going far with a broken arm. What have you got? Pawn shop pulled up 6th Street. Happened a few minutes ago. Yeah. Here's the description of the hold man. Mm. Stocky bill, blonde hair, horn rimmed glasses, chubby face. You were wrong about that broken arm. Come on. 11.20 a.m., Ben and I pulled up at the East Asia Pawn Shop on 6th Street. Inside, we found the proprietor, Morris Brubaker, lying propped up against one of the showcases. He was an elderly man, and his face and head showed the marks of a savage beating. His wounds were hemorrhaging badly, and the ambulance attendants were giving him first aid. We showed him Charles Kirby's mugshot. That's the man. I wouldn't make a mistake, that's him. Was he alone, Mr. Brubaker? Uh, yes, by himself. He has to look at a watch, and when I turned to get it, he kicked me. I fell against the showcase and cut myself. He pulled me in the back room. I didn't even know him. He kept, he kept beating me. Easy, Mr. Rebecca. Let me get this compass on. How much did he get away with, do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. A blue suit, blue overcoat, wrap around, and navy blue, both. He, he kept hitting All me. All right, sir, just take it easy. They'll have you out of here in a minute. He kept hitting me like a crazy man. This is antiseptic. Might sting a little. Okay. What else did he take, Mr. Brubaker? Can you remember? Uh, uh, yes. Uh, from the cash register, he, he took money. How much? Thirteen, forty dollars. I can't be sure. When he left your store, did you see which way he was going? Uh, no. He, he he dragged me in the back room. He locked me in. Ready to move now, Sergeant? Okay. I don't know. I, I, I saw him going through the shelves there in the back of the counter. I, I don't know. What'd you keep there? My account books and my gun. A box of shelves, too. You want to take a look, Ben? Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah, sir. Just take it easy. It's only going to be a minute. Your account books are still there. Yeah. He got the gun. 4 p.m. Kirby, alias the Badge Bandit, was still at large. As far as we were concerned, the case was almost back to where it started from 11 weeks before. The suspect was still loose. He was well-armed. He was still free to rob, assault, or murder. We had two big advantages. Kirby's possible broken arm, which would need medical attention, and secondly, the lead to Kirby's brother. At 5.30 p.m., we had a report that the suspect was seen purchasing a ticket at a theater box office out on Hollywood Boulevard. We ran it down. It didn't pay off. At 6.15, a taxi driver thought he spotted Kirby boarding an outbound streetcar at Figaro and Pico. It was checked out. No results. At 7 o'clock, Ben and I got something to eat at a drive-in, and we relieved the men on stakeout at the rooming house on Alameda Street, where Kirby's brother was staying. 10 p.m. Midnight. No sign of Kirby. We waited. At 3 a.m., Hanson and Cummings of Homicide relieved us, and Ben drove me home. 
It was 3.45 when he dropped me off at Collis Avenue, number 4656. Yeah, Ma, I didn't mean to wake you. What time is it? Almost four. Oh, my. These late hours, you've got to get your rest, Joseph. We'll be all right, Ma. Got something to eat in the icebox? There's a little cold meat and some cheese in the cupboard. Just want a sandwich. You going back to sleep. I had some nice meatballs and spaghetti for dinner. I can warm some for you. I'm saying he's working all hours. You'll just get sick, Joseph, and you'll see. Nobody cares about you when you're sick. I wish you wouldn't get up, Ma. I can fix something. Well, I'll warm up the meatballs and spaghetti. You need something substantial. I get it. 4 a.m. I hope it's not that awful cold. Hello? Lorman down homicide. Yeah, Lorman. Thought you'd like to know they just got Kirby. Where? At his brother's place about 15 minutes ago. Hanson and Cummings grabbed him. Any trouble? No. Grabbed him before he got to his gun. We just locked him up. Thought you'd like to know. Yeah. Thanks, Norman. Good night. All right. Well, that was it, Joseph. The office, Ma. They got Kirby, the badge Ben. Oh, did they? Well, that's nice. Maybe you'll have some time off now. Yeah. Never fails, does it? You work on a case for three months. Leave it for 30 minutes and it's all over. The food's warm. Is there anything else you want? No, no, that's fine, Mom. You go on to bed. Mm-hmm. Well, all right, Joseph. Now, don't stay up too long. All right. Night. Good night. Hey, Ma. Yes, Joseph? Have I still got that old tuxedo around? The story you have just heard was true. Only the names were changed to protect the innocent. On June 27th, trial was held in Superior Court, Department 87, City and County of Los Angeles, State of California. In a moment, the results of that trial. It's amazing how many long cigarette smokers are changing to extra mild Fatima. Here is the actual report. From coast to coast, extra mild Fatima has more than doubled its smokers. Yes, more and more smokers every day are discovering that Fatima is the king-size cigarette that is extra mild. Extra mild because it contains the finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos, superbly blended to make it extra mild, to give it a much different, much better flavor and aroma. Enjoy extra mild Fatima yourself, the best of all long cigarettes. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. It's wise to smoke extra mild Fatima. Charles Leon Kirby, alias the Badge Bandit, was tried and convicted in Superior Court on several counts of armed robbery, rape, and assault with intent to commit murder. He was sentenced to life imprisonment. After serving one year in the state penitentiary, he was judged insane and committed to the state mental hospital at Mendocino. After two months there, he escaped. Charles Kirby, alias the Badge Bandit, is still at large. You have just heard Dragnet, a series of authentic cases from official files. Technical advice for Dragnet comes from the office of Chief of Police, W.A. Wharton. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.